What is going on everybody? This is Anam Shiraz and you are watching Mexico Tech Learning. In this video, we're going to look at airflow sensors. The video outline includes uh, the definition, what they are and how exactly they work, their mode of operations. We'll see what type of sensors airflow provides and then we will start with writing a DAG that uses a very basic batch sensor. And then finally, I'm going to show you how you can write your own custom sensor. In this case, we're gonna write a custom sensor that waits for a file to be landed in the system. So let's get started. So airflow sensors are a special type of operators that are designed to wait for something to occur. Uh, it can be anything like it can wait for a specified time, it can wait for a file to be landing or an external event to happen. And once that criteria is met, it then succeeds or it fails after maximum retries and timeout so that downstream tasks in the DAC can run. It also provides a soft fail feature which when enabled skips the task even when the census task criteria is not met. A typical example of uh, using these sensor would look something like this. So you have three tasks. In the first one, you're hitting an API that initiates a download process. Now, before processing these downloaded files, you need to wait for the download to complete. So here you can add a sensor task that waits for the download to complete. Because the sensor has to keep on checking for the condition of the given state, if, I, if it's met or not. So this check operation is performed in two different modes. One is poke. In this case, the sensor takes up the full worker slot for its entire runtime. Whereas in reschedule mode, the sensor takes up worker slot only when it is checking and sleeps for the rest of the duration between the checks. You may be thinking like which one to use for your sensor. If your check or I would say poke interval is very short, I uh, mean less than or equal to five minutes, then poke mode will be preferred. Uh, otherwise, if you have a long running sensor, which poke interval is uh, more than 15 or 20 minutes, then in that case, it's worth using reschedule mode, which is going to make sure that your sensor is not constantly occupying a worker slot. So this helps avoiding deadlocks in Airflow where sensors take all of the available worker slots. Airflow does provide different types of sensors, which include a SQL sensor through which you can run a SQL script, the S3 key sensor through which you can check the existence of a file inside S3 bucket, a daytime sensor, that's when you want to specify the DAG to wait until a specific time before going to the next tasks. With batch sensor, you can set up a specific criteria in the batch script. And another interesting sensor is called external task sensor, which allows the users to check and wait for the condition from a task from another DAG. All right, so to test and play around with sensors, we are going to use our existing Apache Airflow repository, which you can access from here. The link will be in the description below. So this repository has a couple of things in here. And at this point, I suppose you are already familiar with uh, how Airflow works and their basic operations like executors, metadata database and uh, scheduler and web servers, etc. If not, I have a dedicated video for that. Do check at the top right corner. Also, I have a dedicated video on uh, setting up a minimal airflow infrastructure uh, using this code. So in here you can see I have Docker Compose file for using local executor with MySQL, using sequential executor with MySQL and sequential with SQLite. So for this demonstration, we are going to use the most simplest approach, which is sequential with SQLite. I have this cloned over here in my local machine. So the only thing that I have changed in here is the Apache Airflow version and the environment name here from core to database because that was moved in this new version. The rest of the thing stays the same. Make sure you have Docker Compose and Docker in your machine installed. So you say Docker Compose up Airflow in it. So first of all, we are going to initialize the database and create the admin user which is done in this service. So let's do that. Oops, I spelled it wrong. Right, I forgot to mention that uh, before starting anything, you make sure you create uh, the following volume directories in your local machine. So I'm going to delete this and say, make DIR logs, tags, plugins, and DB. That should be it. So if you run this again, Airflow init, all right, all the initialization has been done with the admin user has been created as well. So now let us spin up everything. So in this case, this is going to spin up Airflow Scheduler web server. 
All right, so it looks like our web server has started. Let's go to our browser and say localhost 8081. That's what mentioned in here. Cool, so let us sign in. Nice, so as you can see, we have no DAGs at the moment. Let us go ahead and write, write the DAG that uses sensors. So I'm going to create a file in here. My census DAG demo. So first of all, we import all the required bits and then initialize our DAG. And for the first sensor, as I mentioned, we are going to use and demonstrate batch sensor. So batch sensor looks something like this. Uh, you can, uh, in the bash command, you can either specify a bash script or a bash command. So in this case, we are just simply saying sleep for 10 seconds. And you need to import the bash sensor as well. All right, cool. So that's that. And now let's create another task that will be triggered after this bash sensor task. So for that case, I am going to use the task flow API for Airflow mentioning as final tasks, it just returns a simple JSON called I'm done. And we initialize that task in the DAG definition as end task, and then we specify a chain. So in this chain, you can set the dependencies of the task. So in our case, we're gonna say sleep for 10 seconds is the first one and then task is the second one. That should be it for this one. Let us go ahead to the browser and refresh our page. Uh, give it a couple of uh, seconds before it loads the DAG. All right, so after waiting for a couple of minutes, you'll be able to see the DAG in your dashboard. So let us go ahead and run this DAG. So let's initiate this and enable auto refresh. Uh, as you can see this, we haven't set any schedule. So we need to manually hit the run button to trigger this tag. Nice. So both of the tasks has been finished. So if you look at the, this task, uh, wait for 10 seconds and you see the duration is 10 seconds. All right. So far, so good. This was a very simple one. So let us go ahead and write our own custom sensor. So for that, what we are going to do is create a file within this tag folder, call it as custom census.py and we are going to import the base class of the sensors which we are going to inherit in our custom sensor so in that case we'll say class my custom file sensor and uh, we are going to pass our custom uh, arguments as the file path and the rest of the arguments are going to go exactly as is in our parent class base sensor operator. And we initialize this parent class as super init and passing all of the rest of the arguments. All right, so what we are going to do is in our custom class, we are going to override this poke operation for this base class. And as you can see in the PyCharm, it does mentions that this function is being overridden. So, so in here, we simply add the logic to check the existence of the file. So the reason of uh, adding this uh, custom sensor in a dedicated uh, Python file here is so that this custom sensor can be used in other DAGs as well. So to use it, just simply import it here from custom sensors, import my custom file sensor, and then we simply initiate it over here, wait for a file, my custom file sensor, and we set the ID and for the file path, this is the home path for Airflow and within which we are going to say if file named abc.txt exists, then proceed ahead with the success status. And the poke interval here we set as 10 seconds. And if the file doesn't comes in within uh, one minute, then we fail the sensor. Right, so let us uh, add this sensor task uh, within these two tasks. Right, cool. There you go. So we have this new task in here called check file. And let us trigger another drag run for this right after waiting for 10 seconds now we are in this task check file and this task is going to run for one minute uh, before it fails so within that one minute let us go ahead and create this file in airflow directory so we say docker ps we go into the scheduler container docker exec it sh and we say touch 
abc.ext. Now we can see this file is now present in Airflow. And let us go ahead and check the status of this task. This should succeed. Nice. So as soon as we created the file, it succeeded. And let us look at the logs of this task as well, just to see what happened. Right, so after every 10 seconds, it was checking for the file. And then as soon as we get the file, it says success criteria met, exiting, and it proceeds to the next task. So that was it. I hope it was informative for you guys. And I would now encourage you to do play around with other types of sensors that Airflow provides, specifically the S3 key sensor and the external task sensor as well. And let me know how it goes. And if you have any questions, please mention them down in the comments below. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And uh, as always, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe. This is going to keep us motivated to bring such useful stuff to you guys in the future. So I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care, bye.